the modulus or magnitude of a number is just the distance of that number to the number 0. So the modulus of minus 5 is plus 5. It's the same as the modulus of plus 5. The distance of either minus 5 or plus 5 to 0 is 5. So we're dealing with a distance, and distance is normally considered to be a positive quantity. So the modulus of any number will be a positive quantity. Now, look at this equation here. The modulus of x equals 4. That means that either x could be 4 or minus 4. Because if we put 4 in here, we get the modulus of 4 equals 4. That checks out. If we put minus 4 in, we get that the modulus of minus 4 is 4. That also checks out. Now, we have this equation. The modulus of 2x plus 1 equals 4. So the we get two solutions depending on whether 2x plus 1 is equal to plus 4 or 2x plus 1 equals minus 4. If 2x plus 1 is plus 4, then the modulus of 4 is 4. That checks out. If 2x plus 1 is minus 4, then the modulus of minus 4 is also plus 4. So it'll check out for both of these situations. So this e single equation actually is two equations. Um, <coughs> so 2x plus 1 equals 4. x equals 3 over 2 is one solution or the other solution is 2x equals minus 5 which means that x equals minus 5 over 2 is the other solution. Let's look at this modulus inequality here. The modulus of x is less than 1. Now that actually means that x lies between minus 1 and plus 1. For example if x is minus a half then you see that the modulus of minus a half is plus a half and plus a half is indeed less than 1, so that checks out. If x equals a quarter, then the modulus of a quarter is plus a quarter, and plus a quarter is indeed less than 1, so that checks out. So x is any number that lies between minus 1 and plus 1. Suppose we want to solve this inequality here. Well, we can follow our prescription for the modulus of x less than 1. We just take this quantity here, 1 minus 2x, and stick it between minus 5 and plus 5 in the same way that we stuck x between minus 1 and plus 1. We solve for x, so we need to get x in the center of this inequality. So what you do is you subtract 1 from everything. So minus 5 minus 1 is minus 6, less than minus 2x, less than 5 minus 1 is 4. We want to isolate x, so we need to divide this inequality by minus 2. So minus 6 divided by minus 2 is plus 3. Minus 2x divided by minus 2 is plus x. 4 divided by minus 2 is minus 2. And because we divided everything by a negative number, minus 2, we change the direction of these inequalities. Now we would normally write this the other way around. We'd write minus 2 less than x, less than 3. Here is a second method for solving this inequality. We could consider two cases. One case is where 1 minus 2x is positive, or 0. In other words, where 1 minus 2x is greater than or equal to 0. And the other case is where 1 minus 2x is less than 0. These are the only two cases. There are no other cases. So for certain values of x, 1 minus 2x will be greater than or equal to 0. For certain other values of x, 1 minus 2x will be less than 0 and there is nothing else. So if we take this first case here, then the modulus of 1 minus 2x is just 1 minus 2x. We can just drop these modulus lines because we're getting the modulus of something that's positive or zero. So we don't change it. So then we're just solving the inequality 1 minus 2x less than 5. And if we solve this, we get minus 2x less than 4 from which we get x greater than minus 2. We divide across by minus 2, so we reverse this inequality. Now, this may be the solution, but this solution is subject to the constraint that 1 minus 2x was greater than or equal to 0 in the first place. If 1 minus 2x is greater than or equal to 0, it means that minus 2x is greater than or equal to minus 1. Dividing across by minus 2, we see x is less than or equal to a half. 
So we actually have to combine this here with the solution we got. So x is less than or equal to a half but greater than minus 2. We can combine that into just one inequality. We can write it as minus 2 less than x less than or equal to a half. Okay, if you combine this with this. Now let's look at the second case. That's the case where 1 minus 2x is negative. If that's true, then the modulus of 1 minus 2x is got by changing the sign of 1 minus 2x. So 1 minus 2x is negative. So we want to make it positive. To make it positive, we stick a minus sign in front of it. So now we want to solve the inequality minus 1 minus 2x less than 5. Um, we can take the minus sign in or we can first of all divide by that minus sign, it doesn't matter. I'll take the minus sign in. Minus 1 plus 2x is less than 5. So we get 2x is less than 6. x is less than 3. So here is the solution, but it's subject to this constraint here. x is less than 3, but it also must be greater than a half. So we just put these two inequalities together, and what we get is a half is less than x is less than 3. So we have these two solutions. Finally, we get the intersection of them. We want the values of x that satisfy both of them simultaneously. Those values of x will satisfy our original inequality. Those values of x will cover both cases. So you can see that if x lies between minus 2 and plus a half, and x also lies between plus a half and 3, then if we combine these together, we see that x lies between minus 2 and plus 3, which is what we have up here, which is what we saw from the previous method. So this is quite a time-consuming method. I only went through it just to give you some better idea of how modulus inequalities work. Here is yet another method for doing the modulus inequalities. This is a method that you will have to use for certain examples. You don't have to use it for this one, but I'll go through it anyway for this one. What you do is you square both sides. So if we square the modulus of 1 minus 2x, that's the same thing as just squaring 1 minus 2x, because if we square something, we make it positive. So whether we take the modulus first and then square, or, or um, simply just square it, it doesn't matter, we'll get the same answer. Like if you take the modulus of minus 5 and square it, that's just the same thing as taking minus 5 and squaring it. The answer is going to be plus 25 in each case. So we just square both sides. And we can do both sides. Of course, it's not going to change this sign here. Because both sides were positive to begin with. If you have a positive number less than, say, another positive number, 4 less than 8, well, if you square both sides, the result is still true. And that's the situation here. We have the modulus of 1 minus 2x, which is positive, And we have 5, which is positive. So when you square both sides, we don't have a problem. Now, you would have a problem if one side was negative and the other side was positive. Like, minus 2, we know is less than 1. But if we square both sides, we find that 4 is certainly not less than 1. 4 is greater than 1. So sometimes you have to be careful when you're squaring both sides, but we don't have that worry here because both sides are positive. So what we're aiming for now will be a quadratic inequality. So we square out 1 minus 2x and we get this. Bring the 25 over so we get into standard form, a 0 on the right hand side. So we have this quadratic inequality. Now what I did here was divide it all by uh, plus 4. Since we're dividing by plus 4, this inequality remains less than. It just makes it a bit easier to work with. Now I've covered these in previous videos, so I'll just go through this quickly. What you need to do is solve, first of all solve the equation x squared minus x minus 6 equals naught. So we just change this to an equal sign. We solve the equation, we get x equals 3 or x equals minus 2. The next step is, tr is to draw a sketch of the quadratic x squared minus x minus 6. So here it is, y equals x squared minus x minus 6. 
and we're interested in finding or getting the values of x such that y is less than 0. So we're interested in points on the curve which have y values that are less than 0, which have y values that are negative. These are the points that have y values that are negative and those points correspond to these x values here, values of x between minus one, minus 2 and 3. So it's minus 2, less than x, less than 3. Strictly less than. Uh, minus 2 is not included, 3 is not included. Because we want y to be strictly less than 0, not less than or equal to 0. Suppose we want to solve this inequality here. Now we could consider several different cases. We could consider the case where 2 minus x is positive and 1 plus 2x is also positive. In that case we can just drop those lines and we have 2 minus x greater than or equal to 1 plus 2x. Then we could consider the case where 2 minus x is negative and 1 plus 2x is positive. Well if 2 minus x is negative, getting the modulus of it makes it positive, which is the same thing as minusing. 2 minus x. And if this is positive, well, we don't have to do anything to it. We can just drop those lines. Then there's a third case. That's where both 2 minus x and 1 plus 2x are negative. Now, getting the modulus of them makes them positive. So we'd have this inequality here. And finally, a fourth case is where 2 minus x is positive, but 1 plus 2x is negative. If 2 minus x is pos positive, the modulus of it doesn't change it. If 1 plus 2x is negative, getting the modulus of it means we have to change its sign, so we have to minus it. Not only would we have to solve these four inequalities, but we'd have to take into consideration our constraints. So I'd have to solve these as well. Um, I've written down the constraints for the first two cases and you'd have, you also have constraints for the third and fourth cases. So we don't do it this way. It takes, takes too long. It's too awkward. What we do is simply square both sides. See, we have a positive quantity here greater than or equal to a, another positive quantity. So we're allowed to square both sides. So this, this is true. And then basically we work this down to a quadratic inequality. So you square out this side then you square out this side and you bring it all to one side and I'll just give you the result of it. I won't go through it all because we've done this before. You'll get the quadratic inequality 3x squared plus 8x minus 3 less than or equal to 0. So then you go through the usual procedure for solving a quadratic inequality. You get the roots of the quadratic equation. You will find that the roots are x equals one third and x equals minus 3. Then what you do is you draw a rough graph of y equals 3x squared plus 8x minus 3. We see that it's an upright u because the coefficient of x squared is positive. And the roots are minus 3 and plus a third, so it must pass through the x-axis at these two points. We're interested in the solutions of the inequality y less than or equal to 0, where y is this here. So we want points on the curve that have that have y values which are less than zero. And these are the points that have on the curve that have y values less than zero. Um, and the x values that correspond to those are these x values here in this region. This region is given by minus three less than or equal to x, less than or equal to one third. We have equality because we want values of x that give y less than or equal to zero. So we have to include minus three and plus a third. So if we take any value of x from this region and plug it into this inequality, you will see that the inequality will be satisfied.